hello welcome back to my channel if you are interested in knowing all about me growing up what what i'm passionate about my interests my work my marriage my relationship basic things I, I think you need to know then this is your video i just thought that we needed to do like a rewind to who is behind this channel who is she why is she doing this okay so this channel if you don't know is about sharing online opportunities online business opportunities money opportunities and all around things that will make us step up things that will make us level up on our personal income business income and also how to bootstrap small businesses which is an area that i have had experience in the last 13 years or so okay so guys i thought that today i have a couple of questions to aid me i actually want to i know answer these questions kind of questions that are on your mind or could be on your mind if you were already here okay so i thought it was good for me to do it early in this video so that I'm more like to put a knowing to the person behind the channel okay so if today is your first time watching me well come it's such, it came at such a good time i have three previous videos though that i'll need you to check out after now but this is me introducing myself to you very little all so my name is chisem utibe aka i am excited that you're watching and this is my youtube channel and i'm super excited that you are here please click, click the like button and subscribe and then chill and let me take you on this phone right first of all like a chisomazo helen opera okay i am from Imo state in the Ngokwala local government area of Imo state in nigeria i am a quintessential ada <laughs> first daughter okay i have six siblings i have a half sister who is my older sister older sweet sister and i have five other younger ones who are also um you know they're big i am 42 years old i turned 42 on july 5th and something is very remarkable about my birthday and that is the fact that i was born on the same day that my parents had their white wedding i don't i didn't say the same date i mean practically the same day so yes my mom was pregnant for me when i came for actually there's a story behind it she said she was planning her wedding and um, she was given her edd date to be like 31st of july but you know if you're familiar with pregnancy and stuff you know a woman could give birth two weeks before that date or two weeks after um, two weeks before or two weeks after that date but so she just felt okay let them plan their wedding you know so that she it can fall into just before her birth day um her delivery day so that she could have time to relax and do other things so i guess the pressure of the wedding planning and everything kicked in or oh, no let me tell you what i used to believe i just uh i am born for it enjoyment because i couldn't understand how they were doing all of those shows dancing all of those drinking popping all the champagne and i'm not there and yes my parents had such a wild wind wedding like they are literally they had what we call a big budget you know nigerian wedding you know um they practically also had they were the first people who used the presidential hotel banquet hall in portacourt in nigeria on the 5th of july 19 80. so you can imagine how much of a vibe that they were yeah um my parents are uh, such fun loving people they still are god bless them uh, my mom was um 22 years old when i was born she was going to be 23 the next month which was august my dad was um going to be 36 by the december of that year so 22 year old and a 35 year old getting married if i'm correct mm. Mm, yeah right or oh, 36 going on 37 my mom was, my dad was 36 going on 37 and um, yeah back to me now i am very passionate about people leveling up and fulfilling their dreams their you know potentials i'm so passionate about it it's crazy it has been the driver behind most of the things i've done in my life and a lot of people who don't understand that um you know my if they are watching this video you know might be able to to relate i hate to see somebody full of potentials like we all are but living below you know 
their potentials, you know what I mean? So someone is someone has human resource, intelligence, you know, skill, talent, but is underutilizing them or using them in the wrong things in a way that they are, they still remain poor and gnashing their teeth like it's typical in Africa. And you know, there's something about also being born in a on an underdeveloped country also there's a wiring it gives to your brain and I hate that wiring. I am very rebellious about that. Uh, so yeah, that's it about passion. So let me read some of the questions, the get to know me questions I you know Googled up to help me answer you guys. Now what um where did I grow up? Okay, I grew up in Aba in Nigeria. I was actually born in Port Harcourt. My father was working in Port Harcourt at the time. They got married for two years afterwards. So I was two years old when they moved to Aba on a transfer on your work transfer. So I grew up an Aba girl. If you're an Aba girl, hi, 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 hi. Because I know we are all over the world and Aba people are very great people. Aba is industrial headquarters of Nigeria as long as I'm concerned. It is our own China in Nigeria and um, Yeah, and I'm grateful for You know growing up in that city and I went to one of the best schools in that city as well I went to Immaculate Heart Nursery School. It was a missionary school and a Catholic missionary school I also attended the Constitution Christian Primary School, which was former uh, Santa Maria Primary School very popular in the back in the days in the 80s then I went on to Community Girls Secondary School um, before I left after my um, JSCE and I went to Federal Government Girls College in Calabar, Cross River State. Yes, yeah, so that's, <laughs> I'm happy I'm answering these questions very straight to the point. What family traditions are important to me? What family tra traditions are important to me? I think that the family tradition that, bring, that makes us all come together at least once in a year is something that has remained, is the tradition that has remained. We always see wherever our parents are at home. So yeah, even though we are all in different countries now and you know all grown and all that, we still have a way, we still find our way back to celebrate with our parents wherever they are, make them happy, you know, you do night, like that's one family tradition because growing up we are always going all of um, going back corporately to our hometown to see our relatives, our grannies and stuff. Yeah, that's one family tradition that I think that we really like. And also, the culture of celebrating our parents, you know, whether it's their birthday or so. Yeah, I think so. Um, what is a defining moment from your childhood? A defining moment in my childhood, yes. Um, I remember when I was between when I was seven and nine, I grew up between, you know, birth to about seven years, you know, comfortable. My father had a good job. My mom was and still retired as a teacher, right? So we were not a wealthy family in that sense. Of course, we didn't have, looking at the indices, we didn't have like our own built apartment and all that, but we had, we were comfortable, let me put it like that. And, I, but by when I was seven, between when I was seven and nine, we things switched off very fast when my father lost his job and, you know, had to get other jobs in between my mom's salary. Okay, well, it's also the same. If you work in a Nigerian government, you know that it's not a lot of money and we are all growing up together. I and my first four siblings, we are closely, uh, five of us now. We were close in age, so we were all in school at the same time. If we were in primary school, we were all in primary school together and all that. So things became really tough at some point. I remember when we used to eat corn jaff, yeah, for food because we couldn't afford anything better, you know, for a few days. Um, but I, I, I love the fact that I grew up in a very happy, bubbly family, highly religious, but right now, we better off. <laughs> Okay, so another question I want to answer is, what about your work gives you joy? Um, okay, if you don't know, first of all, I'm a YouTuber now and I intend to do YouTube for a long, long, long time. I actually have multiple YouTube channels <laughs> because I love the idea of videos and expressing myself. I've been a content creator for about 13 years as well, but recently, I not recently, I started the video journey in 2017, but wasn't really 
good at it in that sense and took it very seriously in 2021, May of 2021. And since then, I know that this is for me. I am meant for this, meant for the limelight. Okay, I really love videos, and uh, I would say it makes me confident. It makes me know that I can reach out to multiple people across the world, and they can feel me. It's not just writing. I was a blogger. I'm still a blogger though, but I'm on, on blogging break. I've, I've also been blogging since 2009. And so I have written quite a lot in my lifetime, but videos just gives me high. Also, I run two companies. One is a publishing company. We actually help people right now write their autobiography or their memoir. And that doesn't mean we don't write for other people. We ghost write for any other title, but that is our specialty. We also have been um, editing and proofreading books, articles, website content, and all of those since 2009 as well, when I started my first business. Yeah, on the other side, I have my other company, we are an agency for bloggers and we create online PR for brands and organizations and events. Yeah, so I really love my job because they, are, they all stem from what I really, really love. And uh, yeah, I'm grateful for them. I studied English and Literary Studies and I studied it intentionally. I, and I intend, because I intended to work with what it is that I, I learned from you know from school and it has these are my biggest expressions and i'm happy that i could make them into a business right so what do you want to be doing in the next five years i want to be touring the world guys i want to be able to connect with you for instance no matter where it is that you live because beyond doing videos which we're going to learn a lot here i want to connect with people you know from different cultures different backgrounds sharing shedding their light and providing solutions around what it is that they love another part of my job i didn't mention in the last answer was that i'm very passionate about relationships marriage and love and i actually have a whole channel dedicated to only men because i really think that uh, more men need tools and resources to be their best and then also to transfer that their personality to building great marriages i'm very passionate about it so those are things that i also um, hope to take around the world helping people solve problems that are you know chaotic to their homes and their happiness you know really are you comfortable sharing what you believe in yes i'm very very comfortable as a matter of fact i'm very vocal about whatever it is i believe and even when i transmute it you know when my views about something change i'm also very daring about sharing it right um what makes me most angry oh my god poverty guys poverty makes me so angry because i i feel like it's at the root of all evil yes poverty is what drives a lot of people to lie to be dishonest to you know go after girls abuse people sell their body for money you know just live life hopelessly not maximizing their potentials is actually a painful thing for me to see people living in poverty and i have experienced poverty myself and lack and what it means not to have and i totally 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 dislike hate it i hate it with a passion and so you can tell why it is that i started this channel right what goals what goals do i have for my life okay i have a lot of goals okay well maybe a few i actually want to be a brand i want the to be a car brand to be like a brand i want my name on lingeries on perfumes on shoes on courses uh, books lots of books at least 40 books in my lifetime and you can see that there's not a lot of time so i'm actually here running at a very fast pace trying to achieve the things i set up for myself and i also want to have my children be the best in their fields live happy don't feel like they are stifled for any reason and being amazing at helping humanity right how easy or difficult is it to motivate myself it's very easy for me because i'm a learner i'm constantly learning and constantly watching youtube channels reading books i am constantly a learner and it's not difficult if you're a learner to stumble on something that will motivate you to get on doing i remember just before i came to do this video for instance i was watching a youtube channel of, of a young lady she's 25 and you know something about her all around of what she was saying motivated me to say you've been procrastinating doing this video go ahead and do it so you see what i mean i'm a very optimistic person as well yes i see possibilities where people don't see them okay funny things what was an embarrassing moment you have experienced um i've experienced quite a number of 
embarrassing moment. But I would say that for, um, one I remember clearly is what you know one that turned the course of my life. I had left home at 27, resolved never to go home, to go back home because I was tired of being done with school, being done with national youth service, and not having a job and just being at home. So I was able to go locate a relative of ours to um, in Abuja. I and my sister went to stay in his house. When we went to stay in his house, he wasn't uh, in the country, but he had asked um, his homekeepers to open the house for us. And we were there. I was uh, optimistic about starting a new career in a new city, you know, finding myself and all that. But two weeks after, when he came back, he asked us to leave. Um, because of certain selfish reasons, um, certain things he wanted us to do that we didn't want to do. And that was a turning point for me. It was embarrassing because um, his house helped had to help us pack our things outside before we even got back that day. I had to put my sister to, um, in the bus to go back to our bar. I had to tell I had to tell my dad that I wasn't going to come home. It doesn't matter whether I was going to sleep under the bridge in Abuja. If you know Abuja well, you can't even leave, sleep under the bridge. But I was that resolute. Meanwhile, I had had an offer of a job from somebody I had known. So I just called the man up, and they came and picked me him and his staff. And that became a, a journey of a lifetime for me. I have so much experiences from that move. So it was embarrassing that, oh, you guys said this person was a relative. How come he threw you guys out and for no reason? Yeah. And there have been so many other embarrassing ones, okay? So I can talk about them today because it's not a big deal. It's part of life, you know? Okay, so moving on to the next. What drew me to my current partner? Oh my gosh, vision. The fact that he really want, knew what he wanted. That's one of the things that shook me. I was like, how can a man be so resolute? How was he so sure that it was me? And the fact that I had said no to his proposals, you know, five, six months earlier, I didn't even put him in my priority list at all because I had a few other people disturbing me. But when he came back the next year, after a few months, and was serious about it, by that time, I could see things clear up. I think it was just God had convinced me and I knew that this was a man to follow. He has such a focus, he has such a vision. You know, he's an intellectual, He amazing. He was such amazing on all fronts. And he's somebody I had known prior, like 20 years prior, even though we hadn't met, you know, for a long time after then. But so I felt there's no, it's, so it's someone that could, you know, that could easily be my friend. And he was also very, very truthful. He was vulnerable. He wasn't like a typical guy who bottled up things, doesn't want to talk much. We had great conversational skills. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. What do I think is the most essential quality in a healthy relationship? I think open communication. Yes, open communication. Not being able to hide anything, not trying to sugarcoat anything to be able to gauge the other person's um, emotion being able to be yourself say what you feel at every time and knowing that your partner got you got you yeah i think that for me is is um you know it's a party to every other one because with open communication it doesn't matter what what you do wrong or right you guys can always walk through it what are my beliefs about marriage uh, i believe that marriage is a decision you take at some point in your life if you want and because it's a decision you take you have to be ready and prepared to take all the challenges that comes with it because it will not be easy leaving your status quo i mean we are all born single right leaving your status quo to take a responsibility to be with someone else and then birth children and cater for them you know put yourself at the background and prioritize other people so it's something you have to prepare for that's what i believe about marriage um I can bring more about me in the next video if you want. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to do another session like this. But for now, I hope I was able to, you know, um, bring you into the inbox about who I really am a bit of me in this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Look out for part two just immediately after here. Cheers. Bye.